Hello everyone, how's it going and welcome to today's Wild Rift guide. In today's guide, we're going to be taking a look at the Tidal Trickster Fizz. Fizz is a mid lane assassin. He is a very slippery fish that has a lot of mobility to dodge, dip and dive in and out of team fights, making him one of the most annoying champions to play against. On top of that, Fizz's ultimate Chum the Waters is a long range shark and being hit by this ability basically marks the death of any squishy target. Taking a quick look through the build with Fizz as an AP assassin, we want to build items that give Fizz a lot of ability power and some other stats to help him jump in and out of team fights like ability haste. We got death cap as our first item, gives us a lot of ability power, 110 ability power, and increases our overall ability power as well by 40%. So that means the more ability power we're building, the more burst damage Fizz will be able to do with his combos and with with his abilities for the boots most of the time i go for ionian boots of lucidity but you can go for defensive boots and then for the boots upgrade i always like to go for stasis because fizz will be jumping into team fights you want to have stasis to maybe keep yourself alive a little bit longer and that means it will give fizz enough time for his abilities to come off cooldown so you can keep using it to jump in and out of team fights void stuff another great ap item 70 ability power and gives us that magic penetration as well so if the enemy team is building a lot of magic resist then void stuff is a great item for that awaken soul stealer a very very good item for fizz you have quite a lot of good base stats a little bit of maximum health so you could be a little bit tankier a lot of ability power ability haste we have the flat magic penetration in there as well and the slow soul flare passive is actually very very helpful with fizz most of the time when you hit the ulti chum the waters you're pretty much going to one shot anyone on the map so that means that takedowns on enemy champions within three seconds of dealing damage to them reduces the remaining cooldowns of your abilities by 20 percent so that means that if we one shot someone with the chum the waters ultimate or if we use our abilities to quickly kill them afterwards that means our abilities will be on a 20 percent less cooldown so that means we can use our first ability and third ability to jump back into the team fight or jump away to safety after we kill one of the enemy champions infinity orb as well another item that gives us a lot of ability power a little bit of movement speed flat magic penetration and the passive allows us to critically strike for 20 uh, percent bonus damage against enemies that are low on health so again chum the waters most of the time brings them down to that 35 uh, percent health threshold so that means that other abilities will be able to critically strike every single time and then for your last item this is pretty much flexible uh, you can go for crystalline reflector if you are against a lot of ad champions this will give you a little bit of armor to keep you alive banshee's veil is really good if you need the shield if you're against a lot of crowd control or if you're against a lot of magic damage Blitzbane is another decent item as well. Um, it, th this does really help you with the second ability because of the um, auto attack reset and also the combos, which I'll be talking about a little bit later on. Uh, but most of the time, this item is very, very good. I sometimes go for this as the first item, but most of the time, not really. And then Morellonomicon as well. If you do need Grievous Wounds, if, if there is a lot of healing on the enemy team, then you can go for Morellonomicon because it now it gives you a lot more ability power. But I think most of the time, you don't really need Grievous Wounds. Your main goal with Fizz is to try and one-shot an enemy champion. So that doesn't really change with that. Electrocute, great rune for Fizz. This allows you to trade very, very easily during the laning phase because it does a lot of damage, especially when you're jumping in with your first ability. And then you'll get an auto attack reset on your second ability as well. Most of the time, you'll be able to proc electrocute, deal a little bit of damage during the laning phase. But also, this gives you a, lot, a little bit of damage in the mid and the late game as well when you're trying to jump in, use your charm with waters, trying to uh, get access to the back line. This will help you do a little bit more damage when you're jumping in. And electrocute as well, obviously, has the 20 second cooldown, uh, but this cooldown does give get reduced sudden impact fizz's first ability and fizz's second uh, third ability uh both are ways that you can dash your first ability is dash your third ability is a dash so every time we dash we gain 10 magic penetration for a few seconds that means that uh, if you land your third ability after using it you gain mag magic penetration if you use the first ability as well that will also give you magic penetration so it just gives us a little bit of extra damage uh with fizz when jumping in adaptive carapace this could be swapped out for pretty much any resolve tree rune uh, i like adaptive carapace because it gives us a little bit of resistances in the laning phase when we're trading against enemy champions 
champions also gives us a little bit of health in the early game Fizz's weakness is the early game so keeping yourself alive and being able to walk up and farm as many minions as possible is very very important adaptive carapace helps us a little bit with that and then for the final rune we have hunter genius gives us a little bit of ability haste in the early game and also every single time we get a takedown we also gain more ability haste so very very important rune to make sure our abilities are up as much as possible and then for the summer spells we have flash you can obviously have quite a lot few combos with flash on fizz which i'll be talking about a little bit later on then obviously this allows you to jump in if you want to go for a kill or jump away to safety or i should say flash away to safety and then ignite gives us that little bit of extra damage in the early game and helps us do a little bit of damage in the late game so when you have the likes of ignite electrocute on top of your combos that'll be enough damage to hopefully kill and get the reset for awakened soul stealer but that's everything for the build let's head on to the abilities First up, let's take a look at Fizz's passive, which is Sea Stone Trident. Attacks deal additional magic damage over three seconds. And this passive deals 120% damage to monsters. Now, this can make Fizz viable in the jungle. You can play Fizz in the jungle, but I feel like it is a little bit difficult. But give it a try and let me know what you think. But a passive very straightforward all it is is when you attack you can see that there's damage over time that gets dealt now this works with infinity orb as well so this means that your damage over time if enemy champions are low on health this damage over time will also crit and deal additional damage for Fizz's first ability, we have Urchin Strike, which Fizz dashes through a target enemy, dealing magic damage and physical damage and applying on hit effects. Again, a pretty straightforward ability. There's a few things about this first ability. Um, basically, when you use the ability, it depends how far away you are from the enemy champion to kind of determine where you end up so say for example if i were to use my first ability at maximum range i'll always end up in melee range so you can use this to basically get into melee range and auto attack champions but if you want to use your first ability to maybe escape the best thing you want to do is stay as close to the enemy as possible and when you use your first ability you'll actually get further away from the enemy champions for physics second ability we have rending wave which empowers the next attack to gush water around the target dealing bonus at magic damage and applying a sea stone trident to enemies hit additional attacks within five seconds also deal additional bonus magic damage and killing a unit with the first attack reduces rending uh, waves cooldown to one second so you can use rending wave in the laning phase to last hit minions this will also deal damage over time with sea stone trident around nearby enemies so you can uh, basically clear waves very very quickly with sea stone uh, with uh, sea stone trident plus rending wave and it's really really easy to last hit and auto attack minions with rending wave the cool thing is about rending wave as well is this is also an auto attack reset so say for example if i was to auto attack and use my second ability you can see that the you basically get reduced time between auto attacks which is really really nice so auto attack second ability and then we can auto attack again this will proc our electrocute so using the second ability and timing the second ability as well because if you do use the second ability and kill an enemy champion with rending wave that means you'll be able to get a reset and use this ability multiple times during a team fight obviously make sure that when you use rending wave as well that you're always auto attacking the same champion this means that your auto attacks will also deal bonus damage to that same target Fizz's third ability is Playful slash Trickstar, which Fizz vaults to a target location, becoming untargetable while balanced on the Tridents. After about one second, Fizz hops down with a large splash that deals magic damage and slows enemies' hits by percentage for a few seconds. You can recast this ability to hop down earlier towards a direction, but deal damage you deal damage in a smaller splash that does not slow enemy champions. So again, another ability that is pretty straightforward. There, there are a few things to know with this ability. Obviously, you've got the first location, which is where you're going to be dashing towards. And the area will basically show you where you'll be deal, your, where you'll be dealing the damage so you'll be jumping here and then if you leave it and if you don't use it a second time or if you don't move that is where you're going to be de dealing the splash damage but the cool thing is that you can use this third ability and then use your movement to actually move slightly 
towards a enemy location and try and get into range so say for example if i was a little bit out of range with my third ability i can actually use the movement and be able to get into range so then by the time that fizz lands on the floor i'll be able to do all that huge massive aoe damage this ability is so so crucial during team fights to not only deal damage but also to become untargetable and dodge skill shots as it mentions you can also tap the second ability as well as you can see the splash damage is nowhere near as big as before but this is a great way to escape if you want to say for example if you want to jump over walls you can do that and quickly jump back down um again this ability is so so important but as you can see by the cooldown it has a very very long cooldown so you can also use your third ability with flash as well say for example if i'm really out of range of the target dummy i can use my third ability and before i hit the ground i can use my flash and my movement stick to be able to get even closer to enemy champions so i can use that again again you can see how far away you can use this third ability flash in time and then you'll get into rage to land your third ability to be able to deal damage i use this so many times especially during team fights to try and get into the enemy backline and that means when i use my third ability and my flash i'll get into ranged auto attack and use my second ability to proc electrocute and that means i can also use my first ability to then dash away to safety because i'll be intermediate range of the target dummy so again it's a few little things with fizz that make the big difference and last but by no means least we have fizz's ultimate which is chum the waters launches a fish in a target direction that attacks to the first champion hit and reveals them after a few seconds the fist attracts a shark that knocks up its target and knocks away champions around them the further the fish travels the larger the shark it will attract dealing increased damage depending on how far away you are from the enemy champion and slowing enemies hit by again an increasing amount depending on the size of the shark so depending how far away you use your ultimate if the fist does not attract to a champion it will flop on the ground and still attract a shot at its location so as it mentions if the fish completely misses misses you can see you can still use this ability as a zoning tool if you want to and this ability sometimes can be very very hard to hit so you can use this in like choke points for example to try and zone away enemy champions but the best way to do it is by hitting onto enemy champions and as you can see how much damage and how much slow this ability does it helps so so well so you can actually use your ultimate and then this gives you enough time to get into range of your third ability auto attack as well and as you can see we can do a lot of damage 3200 damage pretty much with our full combo and that doesn't include ignite obviously as you can see very very long range as well with chum the waters but you can use your third ability to basically slow champions or you can you can use your dash to basically get into melee range and that guarantees the hit of the shark but again the problem is is that when you are very very close as you can see the shark size is not that big so you're not going to be dealing as much damage so you need to kind of see do i need to deal more damage with my ultimate or do i need to secure the damage with my ultimate to be able to kill an enemy champion Now, I've kind of spoken a little bit about combos, but I want to give you one really, really important combo or two really, really important combo. One is for the laning phase. Now, in the laning phase, you want to play very, very passive. Most of the time, you want to use your third ability to farm minions. But when you reach level three and you have all your abilities available, the best combo that you can do to dash onto an enemy champion is use your first ability and then use your auto attack reset to easily proc electrocute. So that's first ability, auto attack and then use your second ability this will easily proc electrocute and do a huge massive burst uh, amount of burst damage and then you can also use your third ability on top of that as well that means that you can use this to deal more damage or use your third ability to easily dash away from safety this means you're going to be dashing in procking your electrocute and dealing damage over time and then using your third ability and that means that the enemy champion will not be able to target you and not be able to deal damage back so it's basically like free damage but the perfect all in combo is using your ultimate getting into range to use your first ability auto attack reset with your second ability and then using your third ability afterwards this is the best combo for fizz and if you want to try and proc the awaken soul a passive when you deal damage within three seconds this is the perfect combo to use so you can keep your abilities on that low cooldown to dip dodge and dive out in and out of team fights
Moving on to the leveling order for Fizz. At level one, we always want to go for our third ability. Now, you can use your second ability if you want to. If you're against a melee champion, you can use your second ability to deal a lot of damage over time. And this will help you last hit minions. But if you're against a ranged champion, the only way that you're really going to get into range to try and last hit minions is with your playful Trek star. You can also use this to get away to safety as well when walking up and using your auto attacks to try and last hit minions. Because again, as I mentioned, Fizz is fairly weak during the early game. Then at level two, you can either go for your second ability or your first ability. Again, your first ability will give you a little bit more movement. Your second ability will help you trade better and help you last hit minions easier. So again, kind of flexible on what you can go for. But then at level three, this is when you have all your basic abilities available and you can dash in to try and use your early game combo. Now, the ability we want to max thirst is the third ability uh the reason being is that the cooldown gets lowered and it is our main ability to deal quite a lot of damage and main ability to jump in and out of team fights then we want to go for our second ability and then leaving it last for our first ability making sure we level our ultimate when possible and then when you once you reach level 15 you can roam around the map roam around the jungle and if you find anyone by themselves you can use your combo to basically one shot anyone on the map so that's everything for the fizz guide let's head into the gameplay now where i'll be telling you all the tips and tricks you need at all stages of the game all right on to the gameplay we go with fizz honestly playing fizz is probably the most fun i've had on wild rift for a very very long time um i'm actually quite surprised how much fun i had playing fizz and just seen how much playmaking potential this champion can bring you have so much flexibility you have so many abilities to just dodge and do whatever you want to at times absolutely great champion to play highly recommend if you want like a slippery assassin that you can use obviously in this lane i'm going to be against galio galio is a pretty annoying champion to play against uh the good thing is is that i can walk up at level one and i can actually farm up min minions because most of the time galio is not going to be a big threat he's not going to be poking me as much so i can actually take a uh, laning phase priority in the early game obviously with galio because he has a magic shield because he has his torn and other ways to do a huge massive amount of burst damage it's going to be a little bit difficult at times and i think you'll see that during this laning phase i do have to play uh very very passive because i have to be careful because every single time i try to dive in and i try and use the combo as i mentioned it's very very difficult as you can see he also has a knock up uh, but i do prop my electrocute in this exchange and to be honest it wasn't the worst exchange but also wasn't the uh, best exchange as well so yeah I, I think that's that's the difficult part when playing against galio with fizz you need to make sure that you kind of wait for him to use his abilities especially his second ability his taunt as soon as he uses his taunt that's the perfect time really to go in and try and um you know deal as much damage as possible or try and get that quick amount of burst damage at times you can try and go in and use your first ability and if you can time your auto attack reset and then use your third ability which i nearly did perfect there by the way a good timing for that to actually happen if i used my third ability sooner i would have been able to deal my combo and use my third ability in time to be able to actually dash away to safety so Timing is always important with Fizz. Again, as I mentioned, you know, if I use my third ability, as soon as I use my combo, I'm able to escape and completely dodge away from his taunt. Always important about timing with Fizz. And obviously that timing means I actually lose the trade in the mid lane and I do have to uh, play a little bit more passive now. I am staying underneath tower here. I am being a little bit careful because I'm not really too sure uh, where their jungler is. So all I'm going to do is just try and farm up as much as possible and then get away to safety and try and go back and reset before Gadio moves in to try and clear the wave. As you can see, that's exactly what he is doing now. Now, what I do in this game is I actually build the tier two item, which is Prophet's Pendant. I build this before I build the death cap. And this gives me a little bit of early flat magic damage. Uh, not only the flat magic damage, but it also gives us a little bit of... Uh, little bit of ability power before we go for death cap because yes death cap is a good item but it is a very expensive item and sometimes the components can be very very expensive and it can take a long time to get to that point um, of the game so i like to build profits pendant early this gives us a little bit of damage early on and i think it just kind of depends on how much gold you had if you have if you do have an early game kill and if you can get an easy large rod in the early game then great but if you're in a situation like me there and if you're in a situation where it's like oh i don't really have that 
kind of point where I don't really have the timing to be able to get an easy large rod, then it can be a little bit difficult. As you can see here, I kind of mess up my combo a little bit. Um, I kind of miss time my, uh, my third ability again. It, it's very, very difficult at times to try and time your third ability to try and dodge skill shots. For example, there, I could have used my third ability to dodge away from Pike's stun and i probably might have been able to do enough damage and get into melee range to try and kill off the pike again a little bit of a misplay um there but again showing you that you know at times it can be very very difficult to play fizz especially someone like myself which to be honest before playing fizz and before playing this guide i've not played fizz at all on wild rift obviously i played him uh, on pc league i played quite a few champions on pc league but i haven't played fizz that much on wild rift so always about timing the third ability i think is crucial and obviously if you waste your third ability and because it has a very very long cooldown especially in the early game uh, that's when you can be put under threat as you can see here i'm gonna go back to base i need uh, about well 10 gold really until i get my nisi large rod as you can see it's the perfect time to go back grab my nisi large rod and now we have our components um uh, for the um for the death cap I'm not too, really too sure what I'm doing here. But I have the components for the death cap. Um, I'm probably talking to the chat here. Uh, I have my components for the death cap. And I also have profits pendant. I don't have the boots. Which to be honest you can buy boots in the early game if you want to. Because Fizz is one of the best roaming champions in the game as well. Especially at level 5 once he reaches. Uh, once he gets uh, his ultimate which is Chum the Waters. Um... So yeah, I think when you're at that point, it can be uh, very, very easy to roam around if you want to. Um, or you can just push in the mid lane. Because again, Fizz is a champion that can push mid lane very, very quickly as well. As you can see uh, with the third ability. Uh, I saw Galio was still in the bot lane. So I was able to push in mid. And now I'm going to look to try and roam around. Try and maybe get a kill on this pike that is sitting on the tower very, very aggressively. Uh, as you can see, I wasn't able to, uh, to basically get anything here. I roamed and got absolutely nothing. But... Ezreal makes a huge massive mistake he uses his third ability to dash towards me so what I do is I use my combo I use my ignite and what I do is I use my third ability to make sure I dodge the uh, tower attack which is another cool thing you could do with your third ability is when you're tower diving you can use your third ability to actually dodge the tower hit and you actually won't get hit by the tower at all so as you can see I use my ultimate. I use my third ability, uh, first ability, sorry, to get into melee range. Auto attack reset with my first, third, second ability, and then use my third ability to not only dodge the tower damage, but also gain that little bit of extra damage as well. So we have our boots, we have our death cap completed. That's our pretty much two items completed there. Now we're going to go towards our void staff, and the cool thing is, is this profit pendant, uh, profits pendant component is actually going to go towards our third item. So we get death camp, we get our void staff, and then we're able to use profits pendant um, to build into um, infinity orb. So it gives us a little bit of uh, less time between our void staff and also our uh, our third item. Blitzcrank does get hooked here, but the great thing that Blitzcrank does is actually hook the pipe as soon as he dashes in here. As you can see, I use my first ability. I use my auto attack reset on my second ability. And it's a nice, quick, and easy kill. I mean, there's not really nothing else that you can do there, um, especially when Blitzcrank pulls in the pike. He has no way to escape as well. So I just use my first ability to deal enough damage and also be able to escape away. Now, the cool thing I do here is I don't actually waste my um, third ability early on. The cool thing I do here is that I actually use my first ability to get into melee range first. And then my third ability allows me to get over the wall. Because I thought in that situation, I was like, okay, Galio maybe has a way to get away to safety. Maybe he has a flash to get over the wall. If I use my third ability before to get into melee range of Galio, then I'm not able to jump over the wall. But because I say my third ability, again, all about using your third ability at the right time. Because I say my third ability, I was able to easily jump over the rule and catch on to Galio. We got a few kills here as well. Again, use my third ability, use my dashes to easily get into melee range. Uh, probably could have killed the least in there as well, but I wanted to go back because I had so much extra gold, but they still killed the least in anyway. So we're at the point in the game now with 4 and 0 at the moment uh, with Fizz. We're at the point in the game where we can kind of roam around the map and do what 
kind of whatever we want. Uh, my goal is to always try and get mid lane priority though. Try and push this mid lane wave as much as possible. Because uh, I don't want them to get the mid lane tower. As a mid laner, it's so, so important to always have this mid lane priority. Um, especially when your bot lane's not here as well. Most of the time, what happens in like high elo games at this stage of the game is that your ADC and your support actually stays in mid lane because they're a lot safer in the mid lane and they'll be able to easily clear the wave. But the problem is, is that in this instance, um, obviously the Jinx does die instead. I try and stay out of vision here. This is a cool thing you can do is stay out of vision with the ultimate. I think, unfortunately, the Blitzcrank actually kind of revealed himself too early which meant that I meant Ezreal was able to actually dodge away from my ultimate maybe I could have aimed it a little bit more to the right and kind of predicted maybe the movement of Ezreal um and that's a couple, another cool thing that you can do with his ultimate is obviously if you're out of vision then the enemy champion actually doesn't see you so that means that they have less time to react to his ultimate which means you're pretty much going to guarantee and hit it every single time they do unfortunately get the mid lane tower though uh jinx was there but unfortunately wasn't able to defend it because they were able to get uh the rift held uh which is a little bit unfortunate um but i think us getting a kill in the top lane is also pretty good but five and oh at the moment uh nine minutes into this game second rift held will be spawning very very soon so we can look towards that i do see the lee sin though into the top side you can see that how i'm playing this game i'm trying to stay play around vision as much as possible now one thing i don't really do in this game that i do recommend to do as i do catch on to the vein here again get my auto attack reset and you can see how much damage you can do with fizz i mean even to the ezreal afterwards i was able to deal pretty much half his damage with my thir uh, third ability which is absolutely disgusting um but yeah one thing i actually don't do in this game which i do recommend you doing is actually bl uh, buy sweeping lens uh, or actually switch out your trinket sorry for sweeping lens don't buy sweeping lens so you see here i have the warding token as my trinket sweeping lens is a lot more important than warding token a token on fizz and the reason being is that you can use sweeping lens to see where the enemy has vision so say for example when i'm roaming around the map when i'm roaming trying to use chum the waters and trying to catch out any champion enemy champions i can use sweeping lens and if there's a ward there then i'm like okay i can't stay here and i can't clear out this vision because again fizz is a very very squishy champion so at times it's a little bit difficult uh, unfortunately here the uh lee sin uh, did do did dodge away from um wasn't able to use flash there in time uh, unfortunately there the lee sin did dodge away from my first ability so i unfortunately i wasn't able to land my first ability if i reacted quick quick enough i could have actually used my um flash to actually get into range i actually killed the rift held with my aoe damage on the ultimate uh which is pretty pretty huge so showing that obviously fizz's ultimate can deal aoe damage as well so because Vayne was in range of the rift herald i was able to do aoe damage in time and actually take the rift herald away what you can see i actually do here is i actually use my first ability to get into closer range of the ezreal this does leave me leave me a little bit vulnerable though and yeah as you can see i do have to uh flash away to safety but a cool little tip there that you can use your first ability if you want to on a minion instead to again get into closer range of an enemy champion and try and do as much damage as possible uh, but as you can see there i wasn't able to use it as much there Lee Sin does use the kick here to try and deal as to try and deal the damage to me unfortunately he doesn't kill me though and this combo here is so huge you can see how i wait for my w to come up and as soon as my w comes up i dash in with my first ability i use my auto attack i use my second ability as an auto attack reset and i'm able to kill not only the lee sin but also the pike afterwards as well so making sure that you keep your keep an eye on your cooldowns is so important because if i dashed earlier there i probably wouldn't have got my auto attack reset on my second ability which meant i probably might have not have been able uh, been able to kill pike there because maybe he might have had his uh, third ability up and available um again so what i did there is i used my ultimate as the slow and because i know that knew that my pike already used his third third ability there was no way of him, him of escaping so i waited and waited to use my first ability until my second ability came off cooldown so that means i can use my quick combo as i mentioned in the combo section to go first ability auto attack second ability and that means i proc electrocute and i also get to deal a huge massive damage over time a huge massive splash damage uh with my second ability so cool little combo there and you can see pain off quite well for me in the end um and then at the stage of the game you can see infinity orb does work with your passive as well so you can do a lot of damage 
I'm going to roam up towards the top lane here. I can see Ezreal is by himself on the left, but I also saw the vein as well. So I'm very, very curious where the vein is. And I do have to be very, very careful with the vein. You see here, I'm waiting for Chum the Waters to use on a target that I can easily one shot. Ezreal does unfortunately, um, uh, you know, exhaust me. So I'm not able to do, do that much damage. I'm able to do as, uh, you know, I'm able to do enough damage uh, to be able to kill both the Ezreal and the Pike. So again, being patient. Patient is always key with Fizz. You can see there that I didn't quickly use my ultimate on the Galio. I waited and waited. I waited until uh, Pike got into range. And as soon as Pike got into range, I was like, okay, if I land my ultimate on this Pike, then Pike is dead. And then I use my third ability to get into range of the Ezreal. I get my auto attack and my second ability off. And the damage over time with the Infinity Orb and the Ignite was enough to kill him in the end. So... Again, a full few little things. There's so many combos that I think you can do with Fizz, which makes him really, really fun to play. And like I said, what is what made it really fun for me to play Fizz is playing a champion that has so much outplay, uh, um, outplay potential. But at the same time, also a champion that if you do make a mistake, then you are going to be punished every single time because your abilities are on such a... a your special third ability is on such a long cooldown in the early game. So it's really, really important to make sure that you time your abilities correctly. Um, but I have three items at this point in the game. I'm 902. I've got three items. I'm working towards the um, the Awakened Soul Stealer. As you can see, Infinity Orb, Death Cap, and also uh, Lich Bane. Uh, not Lich Bane, sorry. Uh, Infinity Orb, um, Void Stuff, sorry, completed. Infinity Orb, Death Cap, Void Stuff. So I'm going towards the Awakened Soul Stealer. And as you can see, I'm roaming around the map trying to get vision control and trying to catch our enemy champions. But again, the problem is, is I still don't have Sweeper. Um, I see the Galio here and the Vein. I'm going to try and turn around onto this Vein here. But I, again, you can see I'm being very, very careful. Problem is, I kind of messed up my combo. I do kill the Fizz. And I think I actually am able to escape away. But unfortunately, I kind of missed my combo there. Now, I kind of want to go back and uh, kind of talk to you a little bit. At kind of what I was thinking with this combo. So, I knew that they had vision here. Obviously, I don't have sweeping lens. The thing is, is I see the Gallo, but I also see the Vayne. And what I was doing, I was going to go into the bush and try and one-shot Vayne. Now, Vayne walks towards me. I timed my ultimate. And what I wanted to do here was third ability to dash. But unfortunately, you could see I actually used the first part of my thir third ability to dash towards the wall, which meant that my first ability, my third ability, like the first part of the third ability, actually didn't travel at all. I didn't travel towards the vein. If I used my third ability a little bit to the side and not towards the wall, that means I would have got into range to use my flash and basically one shot the fizz. Uh, one shot the vein, sorry. But unfortunately, wasn't able to do that um so yeah kind of a little bit of a misplay um but because i'm so far ahead and because i still had my zonias i was still able to deal enough damage as you can see there kill the pike unfortunately missed the ulti i'm gonna go back to the uh, jungle jungle monsters so yeah pretty cool game <laughs> again like you know 11 0 and 2 with fizz um it's on my main account as well in like Grandmaster, uh, which is actually quite surprising. Again, I got, I went on a pretty crazy win streak. I think, I think I got like a 60, 65% win rate with Fizz uh, when I was playing him on stream for the guides. Um, so yeah, quite surprising. Another, this stage of the game is a kind of bit of a difficult one. At this stage of the game, you're kind of like, what item do you need? Because your core items are Infinity Orb, Death Cap, Void Staff, and Awakened Soul Stealer. Once you have these four items, kind of you're kind of in a situation where you can kind of go for whatever items you want to you can be as flexible as you want to you need anti-heal you can go for the anti-heal you need some extra armor you can go for armor you need um magic resist you can go for magic resist as you can see i'm gonna get the red buff here i try and find the pike unfortunately i'm not able to find the pike uh maybe i might find him in this bush i'm not gonna find him in the bush either but again you can see i'm playing around the vision but the problem is is i do, don't have sweeper and i think this is a great example where they actually had complete vision of me in this bush the entire time so even though i was waiting for maybe galio to walk up i think the lisa actually queued the bush here and I, then i realized i was like wait they know i'm here oh the ezra queued the bush that was the one not the lisa so yeah me not having sweeper there meant that i was kind of in vision there and i could have easily got caught you know if there was multiple enemy champions there i could have easily have been caught out and easily have died there so again a, a huge thing with as uh with fizz is to get um get sweeper again trying to play around vision again but uh, but i don't have sweeper i see lee sin in the bot side i see raptors are being 
leashed by someone in that bush. I don't see anyone else. But again, there you go. This is the problem right here. Again, they had vision of me. And because they had vision of me, I died. There you go. There is a perfect example why sweeping lens is so, so important for Fizz. And I think, yeah, if eventually I swapped to sweeping lens. But I should have done this a lot earlier. This is something that I've learned from playing Fizz. Obviously, you need to, you want to roam around. You want to be that assassin. But at the same time, if you are in enemy vision, then you can get caught out there. So a little bit of a misplay, but as you can see, the rest of my team is able to uh, easily clean up in this team fight. Uh, the Jinx is able to dash away, able to use the um, the traps there to go onto the Ezreal because the Karzix is also alive. They're able to get a triple kill, and I think they do end the game here. So hopefully you learned a thing or two. Obviously, I learned from my own mistakes as well from watching these back, and I can kind of tell you little mistakes that I make and how they can be changed and how I can do things better in future games. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this gameplay. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. Hopefully you enjoyed the guide. Stay tuned for the next Wild Rift guide that will be coming out very, very soon. Um, we'll, be, we'll be going towards Galio. Galio will be our next guide. Uh, but you'll see here, I'm going to show you the stats now. Uh, we're going to go towards the stats. We didn't get MVP in the end, but 11, 1, and 2, 22,000 damage uh, in about, I think it was about an 18-minute game. Yeah, 18-minute game, 22,000 damage. That's over 1,000 damage a minute, which is very, very good uh, for Fizz. So hopefully you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll see you in the next world of video. Peace.